This underground palace spanned 56 square kilometers. For 38 years, 720,000 craftsmen and conscript workers shed blood and sweat in its construction. Buried underground for thousands of years, this palace is still manifesting its grandeur of old. However, many people had paid for this grandeur with their lives. Discover China reveals the empire in the underworld. to make terracotta warriors on Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum. As an expert potter, Ye had several craftsmen under his charge. These craftsmen filled the mold with mud to make the warrior's head, and then affixed its neck, ears, hair bun, and hat. Thus the head began to take shape when Ye took over. He carved out its facial features and refined its hairstyle and mustache, making it vivid and distinctive. This head would be glued onto the mud made trunk, and a man sized mud warrior would be completed. According to ancient rules, a potter had to inscribe his name on his work. Thus, if defects were spotted, he would get penalized or even beheaded. To avoid these adversities, Ye had to strain every nerve working on these warriors. After completion, he inscribed his name and his hometown on the warrior. At that time, it never dawned on Ye that his fate had already been sealed from the moment he had set foot on the construction site. He was nothing more than a slave of the ruthless Qin Emperor, with little chance to return home alive. The mud warrior was then put into the fiery kiln, hardening the wet mud into a hard shell. It would spend thousands of years in darkness before coming to light again. March 25, 1974, in Xiyang Village in Lintong County, at the foot of the Lishan Mountain in Shanxi Province, several villagers were digging a well and uncovered pieces of broken pottery heads and limbs. Lintong Cultural Relics Administration prepared these pieces and assembled them into two largely intact terracotta warriors. Both of them were as tall as grown men. It was the first time that life-size pottery figurines were discovered in China. Later, Emperor Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum was discovered just west of Xiang village where the first two warriors were found. Excavation of these warriors, an underground palace, sleeping undisturbed for thousands of years, arrested people's attention. Archaeologists had been digging for a year before a giant terracotta 
Colorado warrior and horse pit was finally uncovered. Suppressed in the dark for over 20 centuries, the thousands of warriors and dozens of chariots were finally bathed in the sunlight again. Thousand years had passed since they were made. These terracotta warriors and chariots were considerably damaged. However, lined up in the enormous array, they were still imposing and awe-inspiring, as if they were ready to throw themselves on horseback and raid the enemy. three lines stood 204 terracotta warriors altogether. Three of them were commanders wearing high hats. Others were armor-clad soldiers armed with bows and arrows. They would throw the enemy into disarray by showering them with arrows the moment the bugle sounded. other 38 troops would swarm into the battlefield, slaughtering and capturing the enemy. Commanders with bronze swords in hand were standing on the chariots in crucial locations, barking orders to their soldiers. and south of the array were heavily armored warriors with bows and arrows. Expanded outward from the array, they constituted the wings. Behind the array were three lines of soldiers, their backs to the array. They were the defensive forces for this army. Along with the wings, they had to ensure that the army would not be divided or outflanked by the enemy. The emperor had arranged his troops in such a way that they would protect themselves and crush the enemy. Named pit number one, this pit for terracotta warriors and horses presented a typical tactical array. Facing the east, this army had incorporated edge, wing, defense, and mainstay, which constituted the integral part in a tactical array. It was a traditional belief in China that people would continue to live in the underworld after their death. Thus, if someone brought everything in his lifetime to the grave, they would live in the underworld in the same way. As the Supreme Emperor, Qin Shi Huang, knew that an army was a pillar to consolidating his empire. Thus, he had an invincible army duplicated to serve his empire in the underworld. As an emperor of great talent and old vision, Qin Shi Huang had depended on this invincible army and his pioneered military strategies to conquer all the other states and unify China. Terracotta warriors and horses were facing the east. Six states used to be located in the east before they were seized by Emperor Qi. If these states attempted to challenge his rule in the underworld, the emperor could still send his troops to subdue the rebellion. Huang's empire in the underworld was 
also immune to attacks. Over 600 pits have been discovered within Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum, including warriors and horses, stone armor, civil officials, bronze chariots and horses, musicians, stables for rare animals, waterfowl, and those buried alive to accompany the emperor into the inferno. However, these pits account for only a small portion of this giant tomb. According to archaeological measurements, Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum occupies an area of 56 square kilometers. That's 78 times as large as the Forbidden City. Qin Shi Huang ascended to the throne at the young age of 13. A year later, construction of the mausoleum started. In 1979, a graveyard was discovered west of Jiaobaihu village, 1600 meters from the southwestern corner of Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum. Some graves had only one body in it, while others had two or three piled up. One of them, a mass grave, contained 14 bodies. In total, 
159 graves had been uncovered in another location west of the village. This graveyard was covered with piles of bones. These excavated bones were of men, women, teenagers, and even two children. Nothing was entombed with them except some broken tiles and their pottery instruments. 18 pieces of the tiles had inscriptions on them. Ching Ji from Dongwu, fine for breaking the law. Niao from Dongxian, Dongwu was fined for breaking the law. Qi Bi from Yangmin, fined for breaking the law. And many more. These inscriptions recorded personal information of the dead, including their names and their infractions. The inscriptions indicated that people came from Shandong, Hunan, Jiangsu, and other places. Dongwu, for example, is northwest of Wuchang County, Shandong Province. Ganyu is today's Ganyu County in Jiangsu Province. Boutsang is in Boxing County, Shandong Province. And Zhou refers to the southeast of Zhoushan County in Shandong Province. The names carved on the tiles are those of the dead workers. Most of these people had been fined for breaking the law. Unable to pay the fine, they were forced to come and work on the mausoleum. Archaeologists have concluded that this was the workers' burial grounds. The carved tiles serve as their tombstones. Those buried in the graveyard only accounted for a small portion of the craftsmen and workers. Archaeologists believe that many others were killed inside Qin Shi Huang's underground palace. Ho Hai, Qin Shi Huang's successor, had silenced the workers and craftsmen by ruthlessly slaughtering them. He had all of the craftsmen and conscript workers gathered in the palace to enjoy the music and claim their rewards. Huang's mausoleum has not been fully excavated. Only historical records of this underground palace can reveal any other information. Considered China's greatest historian, Han Dynasty's Sima Qian offered great insight on the construction process of the mausoleum and his historical records. Three springs had been drilled, rushing down the bronze channel to the coffin. Precious antiques and rare animals in the mausoleum. Automatic crossbows were installed nearby so that intruders would be shot. Mercury was used to resemble rivers and oceans. Heaven and earth were represented, with the whole palace lit by whale oil lamps for eternity. Based on Sima Qian's records, archaeologist Wang Shuali speculated that the underground palace of Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum 
was supposed to be a giant rectangular cave with a floor area of 19,200 square meters. This palace was as big as 48 international standard basketball courts. In the walls of the palace, layers of different structures were meticulously enshrined. The upper part of the underground palace was surrounded by walls. Within the walls, there was a series of magnificent buildings. This was the concept for the underground palace of Qin Shi Huang's mausoleum in the first place. his habit to leave the capital, Shenyang, to inspect the land under his conquest at regular intervals. Thank you. 